Welcome back, Care Blazer. Today, I want to talk about dementia and sleep. Dementia affects sleep in so many people. And when the sleep is off in your loved one with dementia, it usually means sleep is off for you as well because it means they're not getting to sleep at night or if they do get to sleep, they're waking up in the middle of the night, they're making noise, they're wandering. So I wanna share with you some general tips, actually nine general tips that you can try with your loved one and implement so that it makes it more likely that your loved one will go to sleep and stay asleep. I wanna emphasize how important it is for you to be patient as you choose to implement some of these strategies. I would just choose one of these strategies to start with, slowly implement it, make it a part of your routine, make it just a natural thing that you start doing now, and then start implementing another one. So many care blazers have tried a lot of these things or other things, and it's really easy in your mind to just say, nothing has worked. Nothing will work. I've tried all these things. What's the point? I don't want you to say this in your mind as I go over these general strategies. I want you to be open. I really want you to try again. A lot of these strategies, they're not going... In some cases, you might not see the impact right away. You might not see the improved sleep on the first night, but stick with it, Care Blazer, because what's the alternative? The alternative is that you continue going about your nights the way that they are right now. And if your loved one is actually sleeping well right now and you don't have this problem, these strategies are good to implement now proactively. It will minimize the chance that your loved one will begin to develop some of those sleep difficulties. So whether you're in the thick of it trying to figure out what in the world you can do for your loved one to get some sleep so you can finally get some good sleep, or whether you're enjoying this these peaceful nights and you want to make sure you can enjoy them for as long as possible, this video can be really helpful for you. Now, if you're new to Care Blazers TV, welcome. My name is Dr. Natalie. I am a board certified gero psychologist, and this is a channel where we talk about everything dementia. You're tuning in at a perfect time because tomorrow I'm hosting my very last live Q&A, which is a live question and answer session where you can attend for free and ask me whatever questions you have about dementia caregiving. I only do it a few times a year. I sure hope you will join me. Tomorrow is the last day. There's a link in the description below this video. All you have to do is click on it, fill out the information, and you will get the invitation with a specific uh, message for how to join the live Q&A session. I hope to see you there. Also, if you hit the red subscribe button on your screen, that's totally free. It'll make sure you never miss important announcements like this one. All right, let's get started. How to increase the chances that your loved one will get some better sleep, and that means you'll get some better sleep. Let's do it. Number one, stick to a routine. A few weeks ago, I did a video on all the specific reasons a daily dementia routine is helpful. And one of those reasons is it can help regulate sleep. You wanna to try to keep your loved one on as much of a routine as possible when it comes to meal times, bedtime, and wake time specifically. Tip number two, schedule regular activity during the day. So this should include physical activity and mental activity. Incorporating things that um, have physical components such as walking, going outside, stretching, or whatever is within their ability level to do. You also want to consider some mental activities such as sorting photos, doing puzzles, playing a game. You don't want them though to be doing an activity that is so exhausting mentally or physically because once it gets tipped over into like that level, it tends to lead to some irritation and frustration. So you're searching for that balance where they're engaged, it's gonna tire them out a little bit, but you're not looking to completely exhaust them. Tip number three, minimize naps. Now I know this can be a hard one because a lot of people with dementia do really like napping during the day. And let's be honest, a lot of people like napping during the day, even those without dementia but it's really important to minimize and limit how much they're napping because this is gonna to start to interfere with how much they sleep at night. A lot of times caregivers really enjoy the time when their loved one's napping because it means they get to relax, they get to do what they want, they get to take a break, right? And that's totally understandable. But sometimes by taking advantage of that time in the middle of the day, you're sacrificing your sleep time at night because it's making it less likely that your loved one's gonna fall asleep at night. So you really wanna make sure your loved one at a maximum is napping like two hours max. You really wanna get it like 
an hour or under ideally and you also want to make sure that nap time is happening before noon if possible the later in the day your loved one is napping the less likely they're going to be falling asleep at night tip number four expose your loved one to bright light to sunlight if at all possible it's important during the day especially earlier on in the day to draw open the curtains let the sun come through the windows sit on the front porch if as possible when your loved one gets some bright light and sunshine during the day it helps to regulate their sleep cycle and makes it more likely for them to be able to go to sleep at night we don't want that bright light and stimulation close to bedtime but earlier in the day it can be really great i realize this might be a hard one in the winter time for some of you living in certain areas but whatever you can do to get some bright light to your loved one in the day would be great now tip number five is to avoid certain light and stimulation closer to bedtime so here we want to avoid bright lights screen time bright lights from phones tablets computers tv close to bedtime so you know maybe like an hour and a half to two hours before bed really limiting how much they are looking at a screen or have bright lights in their face. So these are times to maybe go to maybe some pleasant events such as looking at photos, looking through magazines, listening to music, things that don't have that light stimulation. This is going to make it more likely that the brain can settle down and get ready for sleep. Tip number six, avoid stimulants. So these are things like caffeine, nicotine, and alcohol. Um, which isn't really a stimulant, but does impact the brain and make it difficult for people to go to sleep. So I guess I should say tip number six is avoid certain substances like nicotine, caffeine, and alcohol. These things close to bedtime are really going to interfere with their sleep. If your loved one is a smoker or likes to enjoy a glass of wine or a beer or whiskey, like just try to get it at least two hours, like don't do those things at least two hours prior to bed to minimize the impact that it's going to have on them. So again, kind of earlier in the day. Tip number seven is along these same lines, but it deserves its extra, uh, its separate tip because so many careblazers think that it's helpful. This is to avoid over-the-counter PM medications. I know that these medications sound so great because they are are made to help people fall asleep and give them a good night's sleep. And that is exactly what you want for your loved one with dementia. But most over-the-counter PM medications have an ingredient in it called diphenhydramine, which can be very dangerous for somebody with dementia and in a lot of cases works the opposite way. It leads to agitation, confusion, and can increase the risk of falls. It's just not a good idea. So if you are really wanting, like, let's say you have done every single thing possible to try to help your loved one to go to sleep and you really want to explore the option of a medication or um, yeah, like a medication to help your loved one go to sleep, talk to your loved one's healthcare provider. See what they have to say. There are some safer alternatives out there that might be prescription that's safer than that over-the-counter PM medication. Tip number eight is to develop a relaxing nighttime routine leading up to bedtime. This is really good to do, right? Because we're already taking away all those screen times. We don't want them, we've already mentioned, on the tablets or computers or really watching bright lights from the TV up close to bedtime. So by developing a relaxing nighttime routine, you actually, by doing it and implementing it, it's starting to train the body. It's like, oh, we're about to get ready for bed. Like the body actually naturally starts to prime itself that it's time to sh like relax and shut down. So this is like some ideas here include like an hour before bedtime. Maybe you listen to some relaxing music. Maybe you both put on some comfortable pajamas. Maybe you do a nice little face wash or brushing of the teeth routine. Uh, maybe you enjoy a nice warm glass of milk. It's, it's a set series of behaviors that you do that are meant to wind down and relax. And tip number nine is to make the room that your loved one sleeps in friendly, welcoming, familiar. That's the key word there. So you, if your loved one wakes up in the middle of the night, a lot of times when people wake up from sleep, they get disoriented. What time is it? What day is it? Where am I? What's going on? In dementia, it's even more so, and it's especially scary at night. So by having some things in the room, like familiar family photos that they can see, make sure there's some night lights in the room. That's also actually helpful. Um, that can help them be... Uh, more likely to fall back asleep after they wake up. It's more likely to calm them if they need some time to calm down after waking up in the middle of the night.
I hope this helps you, Care Blazer. I did do a specific specific video on sundowning about a year ago. I'll link to that below if your loved one is showing symptoms of sundowning, which means lots of agitation, frustration, irritation, wandering um, as the sun starts to go down. So I'll link to that below. There's some additional tips in there for you to watch. I hope that this has been helpful for you. I would encourage you to just start with one of these tips. And then if you're already doing it great, choose another one. If it doesn't apply, choose the next one. Just work your way through these nine tips and be patient with it. Give it a try, stick with it. I really do hope you'll see some positive change. All right, Care Blazer, I hope to see many of you tomorrow in the live Q&A. It's the last one. And I will be back next week with another video as always. Thinking of you all, hang in there. You're doing a great job. I'll be back.